Good evening. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Um, we didn't know just what we would get, and we're very happy to turn out here. And I hope you'll all sign the um, little the clipboard that's going around. So we it's on the table. Oh, okay. If there's anyone, is there anyone that has not signed it? And then I just have a little short introductory, and then we're just going to chat. We don't have a big agenda, and uh, there are sheets that we can pass around that have ideas here to trip your memory. It's entitled, Do You Remember? Mm -hmm. And it's just some, uh, pass this one around. And things to maybe trip your memory a little bit. And, um, one of the questions that we have, even uh, I'm a member. I'm not a member of the library. I'm not a paid member of the library. I'm a volunteer with the Friends of the Library, and there are a group that is doing uh, interviews of people from North Asheville. Many of them were born and raised in North Asheville. However, um, many that just came in the '70s and all have some wonderful memories and had some experiences. Particularly, the music scene was one that brought a woman here to Asheville, and that has been enlarged upon and been a really fun subject. And um, but one question is, where does Asheville begin and end? For the purpose of this presentation, North Asheville will be cornered by Charlotte Street exit off 240, and embracing Town Mountain. Another corner to include Monford, Stonetown, and UNCA, up Riverside Drive to Craggy Prison, the whole encircling Merriman, the main artery of North Asheville, and the historic path of north-south travel to Tennessee and South Carolina, and going north through Woodfin to this near edge of Weaverville. Although we've had some great um, stories from Weaverville because, of course, they had to come through North Asheville to get to Asheville at that time. And so on. So we, they have had some good experiences to relate as well. Um, the handout here that you're receiving this evening gives some but not all of the subjects that we would like to explore. Each person with a memory of any of these subjects has their own perspective. We've been told of places and events we knew nothing about previously. For me, the very first one, and I had, couldn't believe I'd never heard of this because I like New York was that where Steinmark's shopping center is now, that whole area was a large trailer park for like mm -hmm. three decades. Also, Henry mm -hmm. West all sold uh, lawnmowers there. Had big, big gang lawnmowers. Right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, people who lived fairly nearby did not remember this, but it was just there. They didn't have any reason to. It was the woman that remembered it the most lived on the end of Lakeshore that abuts Colonial for a short time in her childhood. She had to go through the trailer park on her way to school. So she, of course, remembered it very clearly. And then Zoe's our great researcher. She looked it up in the city directories, and sure enough, Poole's trailer park was there for like 30s, 40s, 50s. Well, I used to um, pick up people there and take them to Jones School, but it was then called Grace. 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 Uh, to vote. Right. Because they had no other way to get And when was that? Well, I was old enough to drive. <laughs> uh, it was probably, don't you say a word. <laughs> um, it was, I don't know, it was, it had to have been after Kennedy was elected president because that was when I got, I got involved. Now, we're not going to follow this list necessarily, and if you have memories, so just jump out in a bit. Um, I've used 1963 as a reference point on these things for one reason only. It's the only city directory that I own. When <laughs> <laughs> I looked, went through these places and people and uh, businesses particularly, that was it. And, but that was 54 years ago. You know, we think 60s is over once. It's not that far away, but that's 54 years right there. At the end of the discussions, if you'd like to sign up for an interview, there are some little half sheets over there. Oh, okay, there's some over here and some over there. And um, you can sign up for an interview, and we will get with you as far as arranging the time. And, the, and this room is often available, or there's a patio out back, or we did one in 
my van. And they worked with Spock. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's oh, not under their home. Huh? Or oh, yeah, I'll go to their home and sit in the patio or in my um, So that about covers that. Now, as you can see from these, it's, um, entertainment has been a big one. We'll just start off with that and then we can take the jump around. Um, the entertainment has been good, at, and there again, depending on the person's age that's being interviewed, um, the people who were. Teenagers in the 70s loved the rock and roll that began, or that took place a lot of it here, and the uh, garage bands they referred to and stuff like that, and that was really a lively scene. A lady described it as down and dirty and gritty and, you know, just crowded, but really, really good music. But now she laments that it's moved to other areas of the city. Still lots of music here, but not so much in North Asheville, live music. Um, who else has some, some memories here? What about Wise Radio? Remember when Wise Radio was Yes, yes. Who yeah. was that? Wise, W-I-S-C? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, yeah. Well, Jan was on there. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> that's why you were I mean, that's good. It's good. The biggest drawing card was the Beaver Lake Swimming. Oh, yeah. I know there's yes. a picture of it. Yeah. I mean, Nice photograph here, and um, lots of people. People they just light up when they mention that. That's right. So um, when did it? Why did it not? Be, why was it ditch? Why is it not a swimming pool? It came unsafe and it wasn't filtered correctly. And I was there on a Sunday afternoon when a boy died, dove off the tower, hit the concrete below, and got killed. Oh, yeah. wow! So that's a good reason. So, that's so I thought it's because of the scare poem. No. You know, I haven't been here for a winter for a long time, but. Does he like still ice over? Occasionally, but not so solid usually that they used to skate across it from one side to the other. I know, which is pretty amazing. What do you think of Rosa? Not like that. Not not that thing. Not like it did, because my children used to walk across it. But the police came when there was that was safe because the police came and they tested it and they watched them and at least when my kids went that You're talking about when it was iced over? Yes. Uh -huh. My father-in-law ice skated on it. Yes. I believe that yes. he remembers when the car was driven on it way back before the one that came later that was a Volkswagen. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I was out it there used to get that children. thick. I was out there with my children. The right. He and said they, they put a barrel of fire out in the middle of it because yeah. it was so thick. Oh my gosh. For the ice skaters. It's about 17 or 18 inches. Thick. Yeah, I guess I didn't know. I just knew that they, because remember, I lived right across from the lake, and yeah. I could, I could see all that was going on. You know, the kids were, you know, were uh, walking around and playing, and and the police were there, and they tested and be a certain amount, yeah. certain depth. A lot of that reminds me of a more recent thing with the, you know, up Beaver Dam Road. There was the North Asheville pool. Um, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. on here, but it doesn't exist anymore. And we went there. I'm not sure when it started or whatever, but it, 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 it it's gone. That's filled in. It's right across. It's right next to the community center by the fire station. Right. So there was a, um, a pool.
street car line started right here in Grayson. Look at Weaverville. Right where the highway is now. Yeah, I thought we were just going to show pictures. The old road went down through the marriage bottom, down. which is on the lake. Yeah. yeah cause. Is it true that some of the rails for that trolley car are still in the bottom of the lake? I don't think that. I know when they bring the dump trip away down here to go. If the bridges are still down there, I don't know whether the rails are there or not. You couldn't see it be covered by mud. I know the bridges are still there. They're concrete bridges. Yes, one of the people we interviewed said that there were there were turtles and the bridge things that yeah. he's talking about and the tracks. Yeah. I guess the tracks are still there. You can, see where, uh, you can see where it used to cross the lake shore up there right yeah. by yeah. Time Crawl. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The right tracks come across the river. Yeah. I'm Pat Starnes and I, I came in 78. I married a local boy though, he grew up here. It's the same year I came in 78. Yeah. Is everybody not from here? Uh, some are. Yeah, she is. She's, she's, well, yeah. 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 yeah, I was born and raised here for Stein. And I wanted to show y'all a picture. Mm -hmm. uh, I can find it. Y'all yeah. go ahead and okay. see if I can find it. Um, I'm Pat. I moved here in 1945 at the age of two. Mm -hmm. And then I was Pat Estridge. I lived in Monfort for a couple years and then my family lived in North Asheville. I went to Grace Elementary um, when Ira Jones was the principal, a great man. Mm -hmm. I went to David Millard. And when I was in the ninth grade, my family moved to Hendersonville. So I did not finish at the Edwards. And then did you live in Ash North Asheville now? Did yes. Well, I moved back home. It had nothing to do with my growing up here. Uh -huh. okay. Yes, welcome <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Julie Nielinski, and I moved here in 1980. I've lived in the same house in Beaver Davis since 81. And I'm also the branch supervisor here at this library, so it's sweet to be my neighborhood library. Yeah. So you used to come to the steakhouse? Yeah. Oh. That used to be a steakhouse. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 There's some yeah. Yeah. You know, the the same this brush. land, too. Yeah. Same yeah. brush, right? Yeah, I was, a, I was up in yeah. North Asheville, yeah. I was a little North Asheville, too, many years ago. I had a 12 year break in between them. So I'm Barbara Earl. Um, my history is I came here when I was six years old. My, I came here when I was 10 years old, and uh, my dad owned some property up Red Oak Road, Valley Vista Drive, to develop, and uh, he did that for three houses worth, and then that didn't work out like he wanted, so he quit doing that. But um, it's all developed, the land that he still, uh, that he had, that was uh, off of Valley Vista. And I, I went to David Miller and Ira B. Jones, and, Lee Edwards, right away from there. Married an Asheville native, the Earl Chesterfield Mill Company. I would marry uh, the son of the Earls, and he died in uh, 2004. Uh, but all these things are ringing bells with me, and um, so that's why I'm here to so Great. kind of revive some memories. I'm yeah. on the floor. <laughs> Her sister-in-law, Pat Earl, was one of my close friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we run into each other in the uh -huh. so we made the connection. Yeah. It's still rather strange. Yeah. Yeah. When she was a chicken, came first, and then you were your husband. Yeah. chicken. Please. Hey, I'm Jennifer, and I guess I'm here looking for some of those connections, because oh, okay. I'm, I'm pretty new, uh -huh. but um, I'm just interested in all of the history of where I'm living, so that's why I'm here. Hi, I'm Paul Kelvin. My wife and I moved here seven years ago. We're half farmers, half the year here, and half the year we still live in Atlanta, where we've been many, many years. Half bags. Except we don't go to Florida. <laughs> Quarterbacks. Yeah. It's your turn, sir. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, well, I'm Gary Ray, and I am indigenous to this area. I actually grew up in Weaverville, and in 69 I went away to college down in Raleigh and stayed down there. On, I was back here for a little while in the 70s, but worked for the state until I retired about 10, year, 10 years ago. So it's, this is, I mean, bringing back so many memories, because you're right, every day that was the only way to get from Weaverville to Asheville. 
Would you repeat your name again? Gary Ray, R A Y. R A Y. Okay. Now, now, most people think that my name's Gary Ray Ray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> here in the South, you know, Gary Ray. And I get called that a lot. My name is actually Gary Ray. <laughs> I'm E.J. Cutshaw, and I came to Asheville in 1952 on the Memorial Mission. Uh -huh. yeah. I was St. Joe. Yeah. I was St. Joe, too. I don't remember. <laughs> but anyway, he had other things on his mind at the time. It was dramatic. <laughs> uh, I grew up in, in uh, East Asheville, out in Beverly Hills. But he's my cousin. He lived in Rubenville. So we came through a lot. We had friends in, in North Asheville, and then I moved away. And this is the, this is like the fifth or sixth time I've been back to Asheville in 50 years. Mm -hmm. Just here for a couple days. But oh, okay. Okay, you're right. Well, you're gonna learn a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we went ziplining over in the Nantahala. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm Les Stretch. I live in at the Mission Hospital over on Charlotte Street and uh, went to Grace School and David Miller, Lee Edwards and uh, I'm the fifth generation of my family to live here. My great great grandfather uh, lived up Beaver Dam. Uh, what was his name? Thomas Stradley who uh, lived in what's now the uh, Plum House for uh, Beaver Dam. Beaver 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 Came over here in 1978. Wow. Worked out of the, the little stone clubhouse that was mm -hmm. right next door. Yeah. Just down there, and you had to go across the street to get to the D. Mm -hmm. You like your own hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hit that car hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I've known Paul uh, since right. we uh, started playing golf back in when we were young. Speaking of young, my name's Paul Ripken. <laughs> I was born when the first love fish crawled up on the dry land. <laughs> I grew up in the house at 34 Marlboro Road. And at that time, I, I could go up any, just about any street in uh, Beaver Lake and I could tell you who lived there. And those days are over. That saddens me. It saddens me a great deal, but uh, the world's changed, the world's moved on for not only me, but I guess so many others there. Um, I went to, just like Les, I went to Grace School, I went to David Miller, uh, never flunked out. I went to uh, Lee Edwards. Where was David Miller? That's what I was, yeah, that's, uh, that's like where the Executive Park is. Yeah. One of the family, family. 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 So it was a, a junior high? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, it was a junior high. It's kind of hard to do because they leveled off that whole thing. They just flattened the whole thing. You know. <laughs> 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 I guess that's the story. Well, that's it. Also, Weaverville. Went to Weaverville Grammar and graduated in North Oakland. What year graduated from Oakland? Uh, 84. 84. So are you in North Asheville now? No, I'm in Boston, actually. Boston? Oh. <laughs> she's she's a long she's way to visit me. Did you come down here? She's my daughter. She's visiting. Did you come down here? Sort of. Yeah. 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 I'm just down here for Ryan, and I'm a uh, librarian in the North Carolina room at PAC, which is why I'm here. I've never lived in North Asheville, but I 
came to Asheville in 76. I have relatives here that we used to visit as a kid, so I was pretty familiar with the area. I did used to take my pets to the North Asheville. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I wanted to say something. Pat is actually not a member of the Friends of the Library, but of the Friends of the North Carolina Room, which is about three and a half years old. Um, and they work to support uh, <coughs> to support the North Carolina Room and staff. And if any of you are interested, it's fifteen dollars a year membership and uh, it gets you invited to our once a year social. And it gives you the sense of knowing you're helping support a good cause, like uh, a lot of the money is used for the programs on local history that we have at PAC and uh, different equipment that we purchased for this neighborhood documentation. And while I'm speaking, because I don't like to do it for very long, um, there's two families that's been brought to our attention, if any of you know a connection to them, unless you might know the, for the Killian family, mm -hmm. yeah. and also for the Dotson Wright family who started Rolling Pin, um, oh, yeah. they might have pictures of the shopping oh, center. Right. where they may be. Yeah, next door to them for many years. Is she still alive? The Wright still alive. Yes. Yeah. Dotson, Dotson passed away. Yeah. Yeah. They live on Beaver, didn't they? Used to live on Beaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They still do. They, yeah, Carolyn still lives. I know where they house. Oh, do they have? Don't they have another bakery? Didn't they, they close? Right? They, they did. Closed. They it, it broke my heart. Where was that? Morris Road. Yeah, it was wonderful. Right. They had all Dotson stuff. Right. It was his son-in-law that yeah. helped. One of the people right. who interviewed right. said that um, Holly, a woman by the name of Holly, that worked at Rolling Pin bought some of the equipment. She has this little bake shop that's on Weaverville Highway. Right. This lady that... Uh, oh, that little bitty room. Yeah. yeah, and she uses the recipes from the rolling pin for her wow. cakes. Okay. And you can order, she makes about four or five flavors, and you can order ahead and order. Mm -hmm. So this friend of mine orders her cakes from there always, which is very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it still lives in a small way there. It's been there all the time. Yeah. I'd also like to say that we're continuing and we collect photographs um, or paper materials. A woman brought us some wonderful pamphlets um, to add to our collection. You can see from our display up here how important a photograph is. You look at it and you go, oh yeah, oh I forgot about that tourist court or whatever. Um, so, and you may think you have something that's not valuable, but um, we'd love to have a picture of your family sitting in front of your house. And, Documents your house and your family. Um, your parents standing in front of their house. Uh, if you want to hold on to the original and give us the opportunity to scan it, we'd be glad to do that. And that way uh, it helps build our history of the community. And for any of you who have not visited, especially someone new to the community, do visit the North Carolina room. It is more than just a room, it is an archive. Is, is it the huge. new PAC library? It's not at the old PAC library. Well, the downtown, whatever. Yeah, but you know, the PAC library started on up there behind, over on. Where the R Museum is. Yeah. 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 No, it's been That's way years. back. Yeah. Yes, it's moved, yes. But it's a wonderful room, and it's, it's North Carolina history, and um, you research, and it's just amazing. Yeah. It's there. It's good, and even what you can do for it. And this will be like a collection of itself that you have yes. this, that on their digit, in their digital, website and stuff. So we've got bookmarks. So, so you're doing this for all neighborhoods? This uh, is our first. This is the first. The best. Well, this, <laughs> is our, this is a pilot project to yeah. see how it goes. So let's yeah. all <laughs> let's all get to work for other neighborhoods. Because <laughs> when I was growing up, other than uh, Belmore Forest, this is where out here is where the rich people live. That's right. right. Oh, That's the right. way we thought about it. How do you think about it now? <laughs> I live out here and I ain't rich. <laughs> I live across great across on the across from the McDonald's going up look out now. Oh, yeah. Great. All the main material will be pulled together as a special collection. It's the North Asheville History Project. Um, and so like every person we interview, it will be included in that and photographs that. Yeah, it's been wonderful um, to just the different 
everybody has a different perspective depending on where and when they woke they uh, woke up here. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> where they live. Uh, yeah, I'm here. He was waiting for me to quit talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to listen more than to talk. But my name is Joe Newman, and I have been a resident of Montford, and now I live in Fenner Heights, probably close to this this Fenner. It's the street, Center Heights, right across from, almost from the post office, and kind of across from the Taco and Taps. Yeah. There's a street that turns up um, and, and connects to the top of Lookout Mountain, mm -hmm. and it was the main street along with uh, Lookout in what used to be called Fenner Heights. Yeah. That was the original name of that. Wow. Is it Fenner or Fenner? Fenner. 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 F -E -N -N -E yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. It's a wonderful it's history very of the yeah. 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 Heights, and we have it in the North Carolina one. And I'm here uh, really because of the Montford connection, yeah. because when I uh, got to Montford, pretty soon Sharon Farrer, I bet people in here know, know Sharon, uh, saddled me with the editorship of the Montford Newsletter. <laughs> and she said, now make sure you take some to the reference section of the library. That was before the North Carolina room had come to exist as an entity. So we took newsletters up there, and I pretty soon, somehow, I don't remember our meeting, met Zoe Ryan and persuaded her to start digging into Montford history for the newsletter. And she wrote about five or six installments, I think, of, of early Montford history, really the origins of the neighborhood. And um, then she leaned on me and, and another neighbor in Fenner Heights, too, to write a, 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 a brief history of that community. And, you know, Montford people were kind of funny, you know. When I moved from Montford to Fenner Heights, people said, oh, you, you're leaving. I said, yeah, well, you've gone to North Asheville. <laughs> well, I thought I was in North Asheville <laughs> the whole time I lived in Montford. And people said, no, this is downtown. <laughs> Montford's on a different planet. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, Montford is a, is a different world, and people, you know, are, they have their own identity. I don't think they... They identify with any particular other affiliation. They know they're in Asheville most of the time. But, uh, <laughs> and that reminds me, the Montford Music and Art Festival, which I no longer have a part in, but I'll be there. It's coming up Saturday. A good long afternoon of entertainment. Really, it starts before noon. But if you're looking for uh, good music and huge number of arts and crafts, Food trucks, that kind of thing, and it's free. You know, it's the it's the closest thing to Bell Share, but not nearly as crowded as Bell Where is it going to be at the? Uh, it, it's on Montford Avenue. I know that. <laughs> where? Where? Uh, between Chestnut and Watauga. Okay. Yeah. So you can block off the street. Or something. Block off the street oh. and uh, no alcohol on the street, <laughs> and it's a family-oriented festival. So I hope you all can. Uh, is this the first one? No, it's it's been going on since. Um, this is about the. 12th or so. Yeah. Are they having a house tour with it? Uh, no, the, the, the home tour in Montford is still in, in um, the Yuletide season. It became kind of a holiday <laughs> tour of homes. But um, a lot of other stuff is going on, so I'll be down there even though I'm exiled to Fitter Heights, which I, which I like, by the way. You're going slumming, huh? No, no, I, I love Fitter Heights. I, I love Fitter well, I guess you all realize I was born in that old mission hospital, which is on the corner of Charlotte Street and going to 240. Wood Street. Right. Right. All those were buildings? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's the office building. Oh, okay. Right, right. But that was many years ago. That was right across the street from the junior high. And the nurses really yeah. Yeah. cross that street. Yeah. 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 yeah, all right. Huh? That's true. And That's where I went to Claxton School, so y'all have to know about Claxton School. That was a that was a, a, an elementary school, and it was we didn't have kindergartens then. Mm -hmm. And you started in the first grade, and you went to the sixth grade, and then you went to David Miller, and then you went to Lee Edwards. Simple. And so, and my brother, they lived in Kenilworth when he was little, and he was, he went to Newton. So we had lots, several um, grammar schools. And then I moved 
after I got married and had children, I moved to Merriman Avenue, right across from Beaver Lake, and that's why I knew about the ice. And because I watched my children. But, um, and I he went up my driveway, and I would go in my driveway, met Paul Rifkin's driveway, and I don't know what he ever did, but my son scared to death of me. <laughs> children and to show them where I grew up and they said well we can see why the house looks just like hers <laughs> now. so anyway but anyway it's there have been lots of changes and, and I'm in it and I have to tell you that my father's business was across the street from Earl Chesterfield Mill and I grew up watching them and I used to sit on the the side of the, the place of the building and watch the trains go by and we would count the cars, how many cars there were. And we'd all have to bring our friends and whoever got the closest to how many how many cars there were gonna be. And they got to have their they got to have the ice cream. Early <laughs> <laughs> gambling career to me. That's right. So and what was your father's business? It was a textile waste, Isaac Grand. And uh, so anyway, but he was, they were good friends with uh, Johnny Earl and his family, and I knew them growing up. That's for sure. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm David McCurry, and I live right now from Flagstaff School. I went there. I was born in 56, and my great-grandfather was a, used to run the Charlie cars back in the old days. <laughs> And where else would I go? Oh, my parents were born in Hurt Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to David Miller and uh, then um, South Ranch Brawl, and then I quit there. I think you, my other brothers and sisters went to, I had six, there were six of us. And uh, where would I go from there? <laughs> Oh, Daddy was, Daddy was a police officer for like 17, 18 years. Then he was security guard at the uh, old uh, uh, Wolf, uh, the city center, Thomas Wolf. He used to sneak us in the basement and we'd go see all the country concerts and wrestling and stuff when we were little. Wrestling. Not and wrestling. Hey, sex cow in the All that. And, uh, he was a sheriff for a long time, and then a security guard. <coughs> and mom used to wear the <coughs> Moore's paper. Oh. Now, to me, that was the best paper. Where was that? <laughs> That's on so there. It's the music uh, place. Is. Uh, uh, musicians workshop. Yeah. What was it's it called? It's right there on the end. Morris. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were the best, honestly. Yeah. See, you can tell. It's still there. <laughs> that was down from Claxton School. Right. Where I oh was. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And <coughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> well, that's great. But yeah, I was going to show a picture of my great grandfather. Uh -huh. But uh, there's some pictures in here uh, downtown, like the old Imperial Theater, where the Diane yeah. Burden Theater is. That used to be the Plaza Theater. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember that. And where the, uh, there's pictures where the, before the uh, BBT building was built. Yeah. And across from it, there's that big long building. I don't know the name of it. Across oh, from the, the Billboard building, I am Pink. Yeah, I used to go there. We used to go to the. It used to be. That was where Arizona. They built that building. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, they had they had offices inside the what then was called the Northwestern Bank building. Oh yeah. And then they built that other big building before the whole thing went belly up. <laughs> uh, does anybody remember? <coughs> 
did not remember before the IM Pay building was there, there was a string of buildings at the fish market, this, that, that, and on the end was a junk construction store, and it went up plain one night. Which one's he talking about? The buildings, the low buildings. The outside. Well, do you remember Mr. Willis's uh, airplane place on the other end? It was the other end, and it was downstairs. And he built, he built um, those, those airplanes, the model airplanes. <coughs> We used to stop there on our way when we went from David Miller to downtown. <coughs> we walked. You know where the uh, the social services is? That used to be Sears. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I ever run. Dad built that building. His yeah. construction yeah. company built that building. That all used to be a great big valley, and Mr. Grove built the arcade so and the Battery Park. They pushed all that dirt down through there. I think that, that old Sears building, my daddy, I think they had to drive three miles down 30 or 40 feet yeah. to set that BD building up. All that was built on the corner of Custer Gates. This is right across the street. Carolyn, did you want to introduce yourself? I'm Carolyn Spain, and I'm one of the folks that live on the planet Montford. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
We have one more, one more person, person here. Oh, okay. been, uh, oh, no, I'm a very recent transplant. <laughs> well, that's uh, another reason. Okay. Reason. okay. And you're so You've been here since 2005. You've been here longer than this lady. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the new kid on the block. There we go. Oh, I was going to, how many of your six, uh, the siblings, how many remained in there? Four. Uh, yeah. four. Uh, four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Yeah. There's me, Barbara, Susan, and no. Mom um, left. Uh, the six of us. And uh, I still live in the same house I grew up in on every year. And Susan, Barbara, Susan. Susan. Susan Barbara's here, Tommy's in high school. She just brought something up. What was your question? You had a question. I was just wondering if anybody had talked to Janelle at um, the lunch counter. She goes oh, back really far. Know, she might be a good yeah. resource. Oh, she was just telling me today uh -huh. that she was in the downtown Edwards. Yeah, yeah. When it was Edwards. Uh -huh. And what is her name? Janelle. I don't know. Janelle. Janelle. G N I L L E. She well, she's work or what? Where is she now? She's she in the lunch uh, counter. The lunch counter. Right. Which, by the way, is not conversation. Yo, yo, yeah. You're right, but I do. That was an institution. Yeah, she just like yeah. know a lot of yeah. I'm glad I read her name down. Okay. Yeah. It's really funny because today I said, I don't know, I was sitting there and I'd gone in by myself and I, I got a sandwich. <coughs> we were just talking. It was unlike that it ever is empty, but it was yeah. just myself and somebody else. And we were talking about she'd been in, she had started downtown and then she went to one somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then she, this one, she opened the other two things. But she would be, she's yeah. a, a wealth of information. Yeah, she's done a lunch counter for about 40 years. So yeah. she knows. I'm glad you know that. Wonderful yeah. place. Oh, yeah. It is. I don't go there often enough. Uh, uh, well, I wasn't even planning to go today, but yeah. I went in to buy something else, and there wasn't anybody there. So <laughs> <laughs> so stop, stop to have a hot dog. That's right. No, I had a, a no hamburger cheeseburger, a hamburger zone. I don't know. But anyway, it's the first time I didn't have a hot dog. It was the very first time. She used to make a good real cheese. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Got a good question. Question over here. Yeah. Uh, just because I'm originally from Florida, and so I know the Wilson family and yeah. all the property they owned and the yeah. TV station and whatnot, I just wondered if anybody had reached out to them in terms of what they did in this area. Because, you know, they've got that sculpture near Beaver Lake about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about Mitchell it. Mitchell so Wolf, really? No, the other one they were president. They owned the, the, they own the, they they own the property that is now Beaver Dam Run and also the Timbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they still own the property next to the Timbers and some family member lives there. But they had a big part of this community, I guess, and it would be interesting yeah. to see if anybody there. Was that farmland at any time there? Um, well, I know that where you mentioned the clubhouse there at Beaver Dam Run, I know that's where Jackie Gleason practice pool for the hustler. Oh. And that was their horse farm, I think, there. Yeah, and then the, the other one, I don't know, they just didn't land with the guy. I mean it's on the side of the mountain, so yeah. they what was the Wolfson's brother's name? Oh, I don't know. They may have been Jackson. Uh, they they lived from, I think my my mother lived somewhere about she had a block. Well we went to Key West one time and we were Dick was they were climbing the dicks and yeah. And when we were coming out of Ernest Hemingway's house yeah. th with all the cats, oh, yeah. they had all this this whole wall of paintings, and they were Mrs. Wolfson's paintings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was really, yeah. he was excited. <coughs> he thought that was excited. Mm -hmm. um, would you mind? I don't know. No, since. No. <coughs> no. <laughs> Since your story is archived with the library, uh -huh. do you mind repeating what I think is the funniest? Oh, gosh. She was telling, uh, she's one who was interviewed in the Oral History Project, and she told a story about when um, Billy Graham was going to speak here when she was in high school. So, in junior high, because we were at David Miller. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you tell, I just love that story. No, it's great. Well, I have to tell you, start it off by telling y'all I'm Jewish. <laughs> So, I was in, I don't know, it was 7th, 8th, and ninth grade then, with, um, 
was David Miller. And that was what was middle school, which that doesn't seem to exist anymore, anywhere. So anyway, he was coming to Asheville one of the first times he ever came. And he was going to speak at the auditorium. And it, he was, he wasn't brand new because he was new, I mean, he was famous enough for him. He, he was well known to, I, I'm sorry, uh, he was well known enough that it was a big deal he was coming to Asheville, and that was a really big deal. And then one day there was going to be, he was going to speak just to students, it was just for students. And everybody at David Miller that wanted to go had to come home, I mean, had to come back to school with a permission slip to go. And we were going to all walk to, from David Miller, which is where Beverly Hanks is now, to the Civic Center, which is where the, what's it called? The auditorium. Well, the auditorium. Cellular Center. Cellular Center. And so we were off. That was how we were going to get there. We didn't have buses in those days to take us or anything like that. So we were, it was a big deal, and everybody was excited. <coughs> and I had seen him on television in black and white. And he was, I just was, I wanted to go. I, I just wanted to go. All my friends were going. I'd seen him on television. He was really real. And I just thought that was exciting. But I was a little bit concerned about asking my father <laughs> if I could have a permission slip because I wasn't sure he would think that was okay. <laughs> and so, anyway, finally it came to the next day, you had to have your permission slip in. So we were all sitting at dinner, and I said, You know, Billy Graham is coming to the Civic Center or the auditorium tomorrow or whenever. They just come into the, um, to the uh, auditorium. And Daddy says, I don't think anybody's missed that, but that's happening. And so he says, that is interesting. And I said, well, if I had a permission slip, I could go. And he says, well, I think that's fine. I think that's a very good idea. Why don't you do that? And I said, all right. And he says, but, Harriet, when he calls the people to come down to the front. I didn't go. Did you go to the thing? Yeah, but I didn't go down front. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get saved? Uh, Only oh, Jesus. Only oh, Jesus. I didn't do it, but I didn't. I, I just did it already. already. <laughs> yeah. Would you use <coughs> I guess it's the same one. Probably because it brought, it was like it was in the winter time kind of because when we went by the time we came out it was dark. Yeah. yeah. I was there at one of them. I don't know whether that was it or not. Well anyway, it, that was tablets. <laughs> well also you said he, he said that whenever when you're listening to him, whenever he said, used the word Jesus. Just substitute God for that yeah. word. And I thought that was nice too. But <coughs> well, he was, you know, he was yeah. fine about it. And that was his, I mean, that was, he was like that. So was it right? But I was too, I wasn't sure what, what his answer was going to be. Anybody else have any anecdotes they want to share? Fun times or fun places? And then there's all this long here. Um, when we started talking about entertainment, you know, how many of you remember Doc's? Rock shop in the cosmic ballroom. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was my like disco thing. They include the brass yeah. tap as part of that. That's where Warren Jones <coughs> apparently started. Because yeah. yeah. the cosmic ballroom is where underneath Seymour. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, Remember okay. Caesar's Club? She answered it. She said it was Caesar's Club. Caesar's Club. Do you remember that? Caesar's Club. It was Carlisle. Yeah. He's in the 7 Eleven. Carlisle. The office. Now let's, let's go further back. How many people remember the Shay Paul Supper Club? Oh, 
That's it. And then I going out to the movable Margaret Supper Club, that's where they had the rap party for Thunder Road. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Daddy built the sets for that. Oh. We're talking about Shane Paul. Yeah. You had three places, four places. You had the patio, you had Margaret Supper Club, you had Shane Paul. And they liked your magazine. What was the place that I'll move there? What was the other one? Gus and Emma Sky Club. Right, that's what I was saying. Where was that one? Up on the mountain. Right over there. Right over the tunnel up there, near the tunnel. Oh, that's right, yeah. Gus and Emma Adler I had that. Anybody remember the uh, original location of Shea Paul? Right up there, about near where I Shea Paul. Uh, where was it? It was over on uh, Lakeview Road. Oh, right really? Above, right above the lake. Right, really? Oh, didn't know that. I didn't know that. It was right up from where the swimming pool was. Oh, <laughs> it was it? Didn't what about the tea house? The tea house had that, didn't they? Left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you go to the Beaver Lake Tea House? Yeah. Oh, the picture said it was a tea house. Is he selling Shea Paul? What is the Mackenzie House? I didn't know that. You have to make a point to cross the front. I saw the picture, but I never heard of it. So your father built the sets for mm -hmm. Thunder, Thunder Road. Thunder Road, yes. There's a scene in Thunder Road where that car comes out of a window and across the street. They filmed that downtown in the building that the Van Winkle Law Firm is in now. It used to be a car dealership. And the reason they filmed it in that building is because there was a big concrete ramp that went up to the second floor for the cars. Third floor, too. And it Third floor. Didn't they have it, like the drive through office yeah. supply store? That was next door. Yeah. Yeah. So they drove a car up and drove it out that window right. for that set. Yeah. You should see and that. They blew up the car next to Geese and Tanners. Yeah. Where the end mark is now, and you can see geese and tenor to the background. Bob, and then, yeah, and a number of people have been to different yeah. places and yeah. different yeah. scenes yeah. from that movie. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the cabins up here yes. on Beaverville Road was, was yeah. also in the movie. And they, yeah. the, 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 the uh, garage scenes they filmed in my Uncle Bob's garage out in Weaverville, and the, uh, the, the rest of the sets were up Ribs Creek Road, mm -hmm. up there on the right. And they used the cabins right here on Weaverville Highway. Yes, they did. Yeah. Because you, if you go up there, they'll tell you all about it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Which one, like the, the little, um, they're right on the right the area? The, 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 the log cabins out there. The log cabins out there. The log cabins out there. The two sets right next to each other. When you come up, yeah. uh, when two you come from town places. to oh. coming north, just before yeah. you get to the last Right, but there's two little places there. There's a lot of cabins. You can look down and see the roof of one right next to the highway. Right, that mm -hmm. way, right. On a tour, they said um, that was where the bedroom scene in uh, Thunder Road. <laughs> <Road. laughs> <laughs> and you can see a picture of the, what is it, the new medical building now, uh, Jeanette Building or whatever. And you can see a sign in the, in the movie. You can watch it. it says Asheville Pharmacy. Right. Where's right Jeanette Building? It's on downtown. Market Street. Right downtown, right down below. How the... far north will we go on uh, Weaverville Road? I always want to hear about that old <coughs> house that they restored a little bit. You know, the one that was on oh, the hill. The Baird house. The Baird house. Mr. Baird, he used to go to our church. He was interesting. Who? He was known as the Blue Mr. Man. Mr. Baird. The Blue Man. The Blue Man. <laughs> Honey child, I was his lawyer, and my father was his lawyer. Yeah. I know about more about Henry Baird. I'll tell you a story about Henry Baird. <laughs> He called me up in my law office and said, come quick, Carl, I've got a problem. I said, what is it, Henry? So I drove up Beaver Dam to the nursing home. He said, you've got to watch out for your gas tanks. And I had a bird fly in my gas tank. And uh, you got to watch out for it. And he, he, Henry, I would get him 10 boxes of Little Debbie oatmeal oh, and 10 packs of Taylor's Pride chewing gum, chewing tobacco every week. That's and a lot. Henry Baird, I was his guardian. I know all the stories oh, about Henry Baird. Uh, tell us over, why. He went know. over to the, uh, with Williams and Roy, had the uh, grocery at Sunday Knob, which is long since gone. Yeah. He would go over there and say, I want one egg. <laughs> and go up to the counter and buy one egg. When I was growing up, we called Stony Knob Snotty Cobb. Because <laughs> I was in Little League out there. That was back when I could see. Henry it. used to call my father and say, "Go by Frank Radio and pick me up some." Um, this back when he had tubes, and he'd, he'd know what the numbers were. Go by and do this and the other. And that, and he would call up my father and say, "You yeah, go up to the, to the fish market and get me a roast." And, he, and Daddy was telling about going to get Henry a roast to remind it to supper table. 
And my mother said, how big is a rose for him? And he said, not this big. <laughs> You know, that, that was his house. It's up by the way. Yeah, it was. He used to live yeah. on a hill. All yeah. that. They, they, they get rid of it. There's some sewing something there now. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, on the yes. Yeah. 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 Almost the woodland end. Yeah. Yeah. They moved the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. They moved. How many times did they move that? Just, just once. Just once. Okay. It was really a scene when you saw it because the hill was a big pointed hill. Yeah, so it was very right. stark. The house sat up there. Uh -huh. It was a green lawn and around it. And then there were trees that were oh, like, like a drawing. Drawing. So I twenty six just kind of did away with all that. No, no, so, no, it was there. Um, which one was I know there? that, but it was so just in disrepair for years. Oh, right, but at that time, Mr. Bear was still living in it. So what he used to make videos on there. Yeah. He mowed that lawn. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah, I'm his boys. That was her house. Oh, and then before you get to New South Road. So he would be there. So this is a very, very bottom. Yeah, he's big. Well, he's been on it. He's been on it. All the bears on the bridge. Bear on all the bears. Yeah, they don't know what he's been on it. Ambassadors and un people in the embassies 
mostly. Wouldn't you say that, Paul? I, I didn't pay that. Yeah, I think the, the German and Japanese ambassadors, higher up mm -hmm. people that got caught in the war. Well, well, you know, the Japanese, they all look like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what they say about us, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Same thing, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. When I lived on Farwood, which was ran in the Kimberley, and we used to skate on Kimberley, and you could look over at Grove Park, and our people that were guarding the guards were dressed in white. And then you could see them just all over the front of the building, you know, around being, and we knew as kids that those were uh, Prisoners of war, and that these people, and we would just skate. I mean, we were not one bit afraid. We did not think anything about it. The guards there were in ways, is that what you're saying? Our guards. Guards yeah. mm -hmm. no, prisoners. I got for another question about the loads, too, not that these cameras you were talking about. Huh? As you go out towards Weeble, we were <coughs> on the left. Were those actually built by Colonel Sanders? No, Colonel Sanders was above there, right where the road goes off to, so down the river, right at the forks, at the top of the Bose Hills, D U B O S E. And that was Colonel Sanders' place. It has a sign the, there now. Sanders it's Court. Sanders Court. There's still yes. part of it there. It also had a very nice restaurant, which the building burned, the restaurant. It was out in the middle of it. And it, it was an L, and then the restaurant sat here in the, in the L. So the, what was the name of that hill? The Bose. We called it when I was growing up, Boast Hill, B O A S T. No, you just you know, <laughs> so yeah. named after the Dubose family, whoever the hell they were. And her that that yeah. that stone column there yeah, was her, her little castle. Her My daddy built that. The this yeah. construction company built her a playhouse. A play they had a construction castle. company built this girl a playhouse. Oh, it's still there. It's still there. Where, is Where is it? Right on top. Yeah. Of the old Reynolds Mountain. Yeah. The Summit Hill, I think. Is yeah, you can go off. You can go up about the top yeah. and go off the little side there before. right there. So she played there, and yeah. she was the next owner of that diamond? Yeah, she, uh, her mother was Evelyn Walsh McLean, who had married our father Reynolds, who was his uh, senator. And uh, I don't think she ever possessed it, but she owned it. I mean, it was probably Harry Winston, I think. She sold it, her family sold it to Harry Winston, Jordan. He gave it to the Smithsonian, where it is now. Her name was Mamie? Mamie Spears Reynolds. Yeah, Mamie Reynolds, yeah. Mamie Reynolds. Do you know her? Yeah, I know. Oh, no, she's way above my pay grade. <laughs> I knew her passing. The reason I knew her is this. My father went to Weaver College and played football in 1923. Whoa. Bob Reynolds was there too. He was an alumni. He used to have reunions at Weaver College and Weaverville United Methodist Church. And Bob Reynolds would come and bring Mamie Spears. So I knew her when I was a little boy. Oh, wow. I was a teenager. I heard she was wild. A wild as hell. <laughs> she married a guy named Janani something, and a right. very prominent guy here, uh, Billy Hendus, used to hike us there. And she, she married this Janani guy, and all of a sudden Billy Hendus was hiking up there. His father was very prominent, grandfather was a very prominent lawyer. And all of a sudden this guy points at Billy Hendus, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I scared the hell out of him. Did anybody know Billy Hendus anymore? He was yeah. my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Hendon. Oh, oh, oh. oh, he's still around here. <laughs> well, she sounds excited about it, too. <laughs> he lives in Tryon. And he's not very, he's not got very problems. Well. He's got problems. Yeah. He's about the one hush puppy short of a seafood platter. <laughs> <laughs> Is he one of the interviews you've got? <laughs> you need to get you need to sit down and just give him a tape recorder and let him talk. Three or four days. <laughs> I got a story to tell. When I was going to uh, grade school, the teacher got mad at a little kid. She told him that he was gonna have to stay after 
school. And uh, he said, teacher, I can't stay after school. And she said, why not? He said, I just can't. She said, uh, well, you're going to need to do it. He said, i got to go get a haircut. She said, get a haircut? I'm not going to keep you that long. And he said, uh, no, i got to get one. He said, uh, i got to go all the way to Bill Biltmore to get my haircut. And she said, why do you have to go to Biltmore to get a haircut? And he said, well, around here, they charge 50 cents for a haircut. He said, down in Biltmore, they only charge a quarter. Tell me how much we used to pay to go to the movie. Oh, the best price I can get, Bobby Robson, my close friend, he's a lawyer in town, so you know him probably. Well. And we, Lucy and the mother, would put us on the bus uptown, it cost 10 cents, and to go to the Paramount Theater, it cost 9 cents. And everybody would be given a dime, enterprising people, and then in the audience, the other kids would go around and catch, say, give me your penny, your extra penny. It's going to cost nine, you got a penny. Then they'd go buy popcorn with the right. penny. <laughs> well, I used to get a quarter on Saturday morning, and we would go down and have to the movies. Yeah. And we, we saw, got the movie, and we got popcorn, and got drove the a bus. Exactly. There used to be a bus that ran from Mars Hill to Asheville. And the, you know, we'd go downtown to Weaver, catch the bus into town. I don't remember how much money we had. We'd go to one of the lunch counters, go to uh, one of the theaters, and just make a whole day of it. And catch the, catch the bus back out to Weaver. Did you know Von Hoffman who owned the bus line? I know the name. Yeah. What who was? Von Hoffman. Yeah. Carol, I won't put you on the spot, but tell them about the Mountain Dance and Folk Festival and Basketball Hard Lines Group. That wasn't in North Asheville. Well, Although it was still a good story. <laughs> oh, yeah, the shipping on the green is, was actually supposed to be at UNCF. Oh. And uh, they, uh, Heisman decided that he didn't want it there because it would ruin the IRS. He wrote Jerry Isabel letter and said that, that day he just was too worried. He had just planted all those IRS that are out there. Started about 19. So it had to go down. Now, is it, is it true that there was a party camp right down yeah. below the dam? Right yes. there, yeah. Right down, right down. Yeah. There's, there's a big awesome. church, or you know. There's but that a, was an army camp. Was that World War One? One World War Two. I remember two. going by that army camp. What, what the dam? The dam from Beaver Lake? No, it's in right below, there. It's below, 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 below the dam. There's houses there now. You know where the the quick stop is? Yeah. Anybody know where the quick stop is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, right behind that in that field over there. Oh. Uh, in that field, and I remember the gate, and basically what it had. What it kept, I used to think a big army camp, but it had a couple of trucks, and they it, they had MPs to patrol around Asheville. That's basically what it was. Maybe it had 100 people there, maybe 50, I don't know how many. What? But that's basically what it was. Well, yeah, there are pictures at the library because uh, there was yeah, a history group at one time, and Zoe found the pictures of that and, 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 and the, it, what is now, uh, they call Reynolds Mountain, they call it Gooch. Gooch Hill mm -hmm. or something like that, yeah. and it's in the background in pictures that are taken yeah. from the other side. It shows the barracks. Yeah. And um, wow, it was very beautiful. Just for <laughs> does anybody know much about the Tom's estate property well, prior to Tom's life? I don't know what that the, the original cable people in Ashton. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tom's yeah. Yeah. They, their original building was over on Charlotte Street. Right, right. right. They own property up, up Beaver. Right, yeah. And it's I right. know. Yeah. I was just wondering if it was 138 years now it's developed. I mean, you're, we live yeah. right adjacent to it. But, so I was just wondering if there's information about what it was before Harold Toms kind of pulled that all together. If anybody's familiar with Beaver Dam, that part of Beaver Dam and all, or if it was just you know, pasture. I know there were a lot of horses. Seems to me like there was there. Uh, you know, a daughter or a granddaughter or son who was living there. Yeah, well, Mrs. Hans, um, Maitland, no, that's her daughter. Yeah. Um, <coughs> her? Maitland, Jeanette, Tom. Yeah, Maitland, Jeanette, yeah, yeah. and then Selene's the granddaughter, yeah. and I'm Meredith, Meredith Hans, yeah. yeah, was, um, yeah, was there. I just didn't know if that property had any significance before the Toms had it or anything. I don't know. Was the big white house on it that's gone now? Yes, yeah. Was there a fire in Zoltrop? No. Okay. 
There was a fire involved with a different house on that property. Yeah. And, 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 Right, yeah. And then there's several sets of cars. Well, is it, it's on the south skirts of Bigger Bill? Is it where those two houses are on that bridge? Before you get back. I never wait for Mr. Gomez. I went up there with a couple on Bacon Avenue and go back. Way back. Mr. Bill and Bozo. Yeah, Bozo. 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 Mr. Bill and Bozo. Mr. TV show. Bill and Bill. 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 Bill and the strip going across said next week B which will be in color. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that that you know WLOS studio it was just a yeah. humongous old house. And it was beautiful. I'd like to know more about it. Was, yeah, it was a huge. It was done. Big house. That was it right there. And they add they added on to it, and it's on the side of the mountain. Yeah. yeah. Do you know whose house that was? Oh, uh, right next door to it. I don't know who it was. That was. The one that's still there start with a B. Yeah. yeah right. but, but, well, I battle. Battle. Uh, that was the old West Street Battle. West Street Battle. No. Western battle House. Battle. battle. West Street Battle. Yeah, that's West Street Battle. And cause his daughter-in-law worked for, with me at the Red Cross. And <coughs> I was up there just a time or two. And it was interesting. Very interesting. The West Street Battle House or the, the Battle House? Battle House. Well, I worked there. But Bill Norwood was his name. Bill, Bill Norwood. Bill Norwood. 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 He was not a nice guy. Really? He was mean. What? He, he, when he wasn't on screen with those kids, he wasn't nice to them. I don't know. Oh. I agree. I agree. I knew Bill Norwood. He was not that nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? I hope that's not on film. <laughs> Have y'all been in CD's Castle? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been in there. Where's that? I've, I've heard about it all my life. I've never been That's up there. Those big apartments up there, they're still there. You can see it from the road. Oh, uh, just Fred before you come into the cut. Fred Seymour. Yeah, the road. Ah, oh, oh, that's, that's where that went. He, 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 he wrote, he, 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 he was, he was uh, a uh, 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 Grove son in law, and he built that in the staircase. See, he ran the Grove Park in for Grove. Oh, I see now, said the blind man. Then came A.B. Tech. No, you didn't see that? No, A.B. Tech. Then A.B. Tech. I didn't know it was ever A.B. Tech. I'm sorry. Well, no, I ain't no done A.B. Tech. I'm sorry. Well, that's what I was thinking. When I was thinking it's yet. That was the farm. Yeah, it was the farm. Well, that's what I was thinking. I don't know. I can't tell you. It's okay. He might want to see it. One person in the room that you ask. I'm going back to my planet. Hudson and went down Alexander Road and rolled a car 
three times end over end, or roll over this way, and Paul Brown's. So you went down the hill. Went down the hill. Got him down, went up there, couldn't make that turn. Boom, 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 boom. Three times, and not a one of us got a scratch on it. <laughs> they don't make them like that anymore. They don't make them like that anymore. Not at all. I wanted to tell you about Sarah's View. Well, Sarah's View is just a land island in Weaverville. It's now kind of right beside the lake there. You leave, leave Weaverville, you all might be familiar with all got. That was my land, and I sold it. But my father brought it way back, and it was called, it was owned by Sarah Coleman Porter. And her husband called it Sarah's View because it looked up the Ring Street back, and that's all there is to it. But her husband was very well known, his name was O. Henry. Oh, wow. oh, oh, wow. oh, wow. The writer? William Sidney yeah. Ford, yes. He's, he's buried the river. Yeah. That was her husband? Yeah. She was Ford. <laughs> Sarah Coleman Porter. Lived right there where the bridge across was near the bridge across was on the old road. Her house was there. That was Sarah's view down there where on top of that deal. Who was the general the 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 General Rowe. General Rowe and General Rowe. Is that why they have the name of that? Oh, uh, uh, he was my scoutmaster, and he ran like the U.S. Army. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he got that. Yeah. Uh, generals, it's 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 not there. It's coming right General, Mr. Stradley, you mentioned um, the your uncle's garage where they filmed part of that. Um, a fellow that one of the interviews that we've done. He yeah. lived right behind that garage. His name was Michael Moore. Yeah. Um, Paul, next year, he lived right behind there. He remembers like he was a fellow in the garage. He lived on park. Now we have to there. He lived behind where that was. Sloan. General Sloan. Yeah, General Sloan. Yeah, that's what it was. He was my scoutmaster, and he, he really did look like the U.S. Army. Well, I never did why did they build that bridge across? For two columns on both sides. Oh, okay, so they, they... So their children could play yeah. without crossing the street. It's okay. the whole family. Columns on both sides. Now, uh, what's his name on it uh, on one side? Is it still open? Like, is it a little pedestrian bridge? Or? Yeah, it's pedestrian. There's a shrubbery the all over the front of it so, that, so nobody yeah. wants to walk yeah. across it. Yeah. This way? The shrubbery. Oh, what's what? What's shrubbery? Yeah. 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 What is there? Yeah. What is there? Yeah. What is there? <coughs> this board of Shell Coleman Porter here back. Conrad. Back that yeah. thing. Conrad Industries. Conrad. Yeah. Wow. But she lived right back there. She she was in the well. And she used to get. Royalties from New York and the publishers when every time somebody played one of Henry's stories or whatever. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. 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 My father's a person. Exactly. Right. I had a power of attorney. So what was her name? Sarah Coleman Porter. And her husband was William Sidney Porter, who we were better known as then. Is that related to the Coleman? Is that related to the Coleman that has that where the mall? No. No, no not. No. They're not related, but I'm talking about the Chamber of Commerce building was a coma. We were just talking about <coughs> it. We were talking about it. And that's, so the that's the they're not related way. to the same coma. No, no, that's William Golden. That's William and his Pokey Golden, Nemo Golden. That was Nemo. Nemo. That was Nemo. Sarah Prime. Nemo. Was she related to the coma? No, 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 they weren't kin. That was, uh, that was a different coma. That was the house that went down in the night. Yeah, that was, uh, that was William Golden and Nemo Golden and his brother, uh, Something else. They were from Chester, South Carolina. I represented them, and I knew it. And all of a sudden, there were three of them. And every time there was two women, they all lived together, except Nemo. He went to Norfolk Forest, but the rest of them lived there, never married. And one by one, they died off. And they were buried in the Richland County Cemetery down in Charleston, uh, uh, South Carolina. And they never even spent any money to put up a marker. <laughs> and the house went up in flames. In the night. In the night. They tore it down. They did. The the not the family. Yeah. The people that had lost the land yeah. and wanted to build a restaurant. Right. Yeah. What was the name of that restaurant? I can't remember. What was the name of that uh, Peddler. Yes. Peddler Steakhouse. Right. 
Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Where was that? Where was the peddler, was the peddler before it was there? I don't know. East Bay, East Bay, over close to the tunnel, over close to the. It was. You're right. You're right. Yeah. That's right. That's what I was thinking. Three cents cold. 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 Cold.